Following a big design effort, including production of dozens of detailed drawings, we retained Halco at Irvine in Scotland to manufacture this cylinder block for us last year. We are presently looking at the rear of the cylinder block. As you will be well aware, the P2 is a three cylinder engine and what we're looking at here are the stuffing boxes where the piston rods come through and in this hole here are the packings which prevent steam leaking out of the piston rod when, when it's moving backwards and forwards. Above that, this is a slide bar support and then above that we have the bits that distinguish this locomotive from most steam locomotives around today. These are the housings for the poppet valves. This, the smaller one, is the inlet valve and the larger one here is the exhaust valve. The steam for the inlet comes in through a cast steel steam port here, uh, which is something that William Cook Cast Product at Sheffield made for us and has subsequently mach been machined up and welded onto the next of the structure. The exhaust comes out of the ports here, which go down to the cylinders, through the valve, and then goes backwards into another series of ports which are between the frames inside the, the cylinder assembly to come out at the blast pipe. Now, as we move across to the middle, we have a repeat performance with another uh, stuffing box here, piston rod, slide bar mounting. The difference this time is that we have moved the valves from being above the cylinder, because if they had been, they'd have ended up in the smoke box, down to one side here. But the relationship between inlet, exhaust and cylinder is geometrically the same as it is on the outside cylinder, except that it's tipped over. Again, we have a cast steel steam port feeding from each end, uh, at each end. These cast steel steam ports represent a major departure from the original design, which was flawed by having the ports feeding these cylinders uh, built in to the centre casting, and where in some cases they were separated from exhaust only by a single thickness of cast iron. This had the downside of when the engine was working hard, the incoming steam was superheating the outgoing exhaust up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit when they measured this on the Vitri plant. This is of course is very undesirable because that's wasted energy. It also had the other drawback that the extra energy in the exhaust made the blast so fierce that it tended to lift the fire off the grate. What we've done in the redesign is to keep the inlet steam separate from the frames and the exhaust as much as possible so that we don't get this heat transfer going on. The final thing I will point to here is this. This comes out of the exhaust uh, ports inside and is the feed for exhaust steam to the exhaust steam injector at the back of the engine. One more thing we'll look at before we move round to the front of the cylinder block is the method by which this block is located in the frames on the engine. Essentially, there are three pads on each side which are part of the side frames of the block which locate very accurately in corresponding cutouts on the frames. There is one at the back here, there is one underneath and there is a similar one to the back at the front. And the intention is that when we finally lower the cylinder block onto the frame, there will be a small interference in these front and back ones with the corresponding slot in the frames, as that will lock the cylinder block very firmly into place, in the right place. You will see here that some machining has been going on. This is Halco's preliminary machining of this face which ultimately has to be set so that from there across to here, its opposite number, is precisely the right distance for the distance on the outside of the frames. 
As you can see, we already have the cutouts in the frames which were accurately CNC machined when the frame plates were machined and drilled right back in the early days. Moving round to the front of the block, we'll explain some of the salient features here. Essentially, the front of the block is a mirror image of the back of the block, except, of course, that instead of stuffing boxes, we have cylinder covers bolted on to the front of the three cylinders here. The valves, though, are effectively identical. This is a full-sized 3D printed model of an inlet valve. It's what is known as a double beat valve. So there are actually two seats, one there and one here, which make contact with the seats inside the valve chamber to, to seal it when it's closed. Now, this in principle is like a car valve, but they are only single seat or beat valves. The reason why we need two in this design is that the volumes of steam are much larger than the corresponding volumes of exhaust that you're, or inlet gas that you would find on a, a car type engine. So in order to give greater capacity, as soon as this valve opens, steam can pass round here into the cylinder and through the middle. This makes the effective area of the valve when it is open much bigger than a normal car valve would have, would be. And this locates inside the steam valve port and steam chest here. I'm just offering up to roughly where it is at the moment. There will ultimately be uh, cast iron um, seats pressed into these places to form the seal with the valve. Now the valve itself is, will have a spring on the outside here between it and the cover to keep it shut and there will be a spindle in the hole here which extends through a seal and another valve seat into the middle area of the cylinder block. One thing we have to do with this cylinder block because it is made of steel is to insert cast iron liners into the cylinder to provide adequate smooth lubrication for the pistons. This cast iron is a special mix that used to be known as cylinder metal and includes a certain amount of phosphorus in it which, could create, which provides considerable toughness to wear which is obviously essential in something which has got a piston rubbing up and down in it all the time. The liner has ports uh, machined into it to correspond to the ports which take the steam up to the uh, from and to the valves. We are now looking at the smoke box saddle. This area here forms the floor of part of the smoke box and in order to enable us to bolt the smoke box on reasonably accurately you will see some machining has gone on here to come up with the correct profile for the bottom of the smoke box. There will ultimately be machine sections along here as well for the same reason. We have three conspicuous holes in the top of the smoke box. The first one here is the incoming main steam pipe from the superheater header to serve the steam pipe feeds to the middle cylinder. So this basically goes down into a pipe which is connected to the cast steel steam ports at either end. And this will have eventually have a spherical lens joint on it and four studs to connect the pipe to. The hole in the middle here is for the blast pipe and the blast pipe itself bolts onto the top of here once Halco have finished machining and uh, adding stud holes. And finally we have a hole over here which will simply have a, a lid on it which is bolted down and the purpose of this hole is to facilitate in installing the drive to the valves for the inside uh, steam valves, inside cylinder steam valves. The valve and valve spindle are mounted on what is effectively a combined inner seat and valve guide such that the spindle sticks a little way out of this housing here when fully installed. We then have a cam box which sits in here 
which has a total of six tappets sticking out of it, each of which comes into contact with one of these spindles. And the cam, as it goes round, pushes the tappet in and out to open the valve when you require it. Now, to add to the complexity, we have a problem on this, that having moved the valves for the middle cylinder over to this side of the block, the drive for the inlet valve for the middle cylinder is still on the other side of the engine. So to overcome this, we have designed a set of rocker shafts and rockers, which will come down to here, where you will see where the valves come out for the inside cylinder inlet valve. And the rockers will pass across the top of the cylinder there, through the gap you can see, so that the rocker on the other side corresponds to the inlet valve cams, which are attached to the cam box on the other side. The cam boxes themselves will be mounted on runners, which will be welded into here once all the rest of the work has been done. And they're designed so that there's just a couple of bolts hold each cam box in. And for maintenance purposes, you undo the bolts with their catches and then just slide the whole cam box out and work on it on a bench because obviously there is not a lot of room inside here to be able to take the cam box apart.